One of the central principles of the Buddhist teachings is that we have to take responsibility for our own actions. If we spend too much time thinking about what other people should be doing or how they should be getting along, we tend to miss what we're doing and what we're getting along with. We don't really see the impulses coming out of our own minds because we're concerned about what everybody else should be doing. So when you realize that you're leaving untended, the area where you actually are responsible, that's when you're ready to practice. That's why we meditate, is because our actions do come out of our minds. They come out of our intentions. And that's something you can be responsible for. Things that pop into the mind may be coming from who knows where. But what you do with them right now, that's important. So we meditate so that we can be very clear about that, see what's happening, and gain some control over all these various impulses. So focus in right here. The breath is a good place to focus because it's a guarantee that you're in the present moment. And that's also right where the mind and the body meet. If the mind is going to have an impact on the body, it does through the breath energy. And it's through the breath energy that we sense the body. So it's like a checkpoint everybody has to go through right here. Your intentions go out through the breath. And the way you feel your body from the inside comes in through the breath. So think of the breath as a whole body process. It's the sense of energy that's flowing through all the nerves, all the various parts of the body. As you breathe in, as you breathe out, certain parts are going to be doing more work than others. And in the beginning, you want to focus there. Where do you sense the movement of the breath most clearly? Try to stay with that. Let that be your anchor. And try to make that center broad and open. If you clamp down on it, things get very uncomfortable very quickly. So you want to be, you want to be centered. You want to be very steadily here, but you also want to have a sense of openness around your focus. And look at the quality of the breath itself when you're breathing in. Does it feel tense? Does it feel constricted? When you breathe out, are you just kind of pushing things out? Try to have a smooth breath coming in and a smooth breath going out. See how that feels. And if the breath seems to be still for a minute between the in-breath and the out-breath, or between the out-breath and the in-breath. Allow it to be still. Just stay right there, centered, with this sense of the whole body as your foundation or as your framework. And for the time being, whatever other thoughts come up, you don't have to deal with them. Just let them go. Let them go. You're trying to create this sense of solid center right here. Because it's only when your awareness is solid and your gaze is steady that you can see things clearly in the mind. You can understand the intentions that form around sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations, feelings, perceptions, fabrications, the whole gamut. They're going to form right here. And they're going to play out right here. And if you don't stick with them, you don't see how things play out. You don't see how a cause leads to an effect. And what the causes are. Greed may be coming up, and you don't recognize it as greed. At least in the very beginning. That's a while be after a while it begins to grow, and then you start realizing, well, I've got a problem here. The same with anger. Sometimes it starts as a minor irritation, and then you find it building. 
Delusion is hard to see. The best way to deal with delusion is to act on what you think is the best option and then see what actually happens as a result. And over time you learn more and more about where you're deluded about what causes what. And all this requires that you be able to see things over time as the process plays itself out, which means you have to stay right here. You can't just kind of check in every now and then and then go running off someplace else and then check in again, because a lot of important things can happen in between. It's like running in and out of a room where the a TV is on, you hear bits and snatches of the news reports, and then you run out for a while and you come back in and you're not really sure are they talking about the same report or is it something else. You weren't there for the whole story. So you're going to be here for the whole story, which means you have to get really solidly centered. This requires desire, it requires a strong sense of self. Sometimes we are supposed to have no sense of self at all, but that doesn't work. You need a healthy sense of self that keeps you directed, realizing that you are responsible for your actions. And when you do that well, and John Sawat used to like to make the point that the Buddha would often talk about how, say, the aggregates are not self or the senses are not self, but he never says that about karma. It's a passage where we chat regularly. And we're the owners of our actions. Because this is something we really are responsible for. And so our actions right now are to get the mind to settle down so you can look at your other actions clearly. So whatever comes up in the mind, it might be a great insight, it might be some incident from the past, something you're anticipating from the future, everything right now that's not directly related to the breath doesn't belong here. So you let it go, let it go. And if you find yourself getting snagged on something, okay, do what you can to quickly untangle the snag and then get back to the breath. As you get more at ease with the breath, it's important that you develop a really large full body awareness. Because otherwise, for the comfort of the breath, it's very easy to start drifting off. So as soon as things get comfortable, you've got work to do. You can examine the breath sensations in the different parts of the body, kind of go through things systematically, and look in areas that you tend to overlook. How's the breath between your toes right now? How's the breath between your fingers? How about in your ears? Try to make a thorough survey. And if you don't notice anything, say, well, Okay. Don't notice anything right now. Maybe I'll come back later some to get more sensitive to things. Because it does require a certain sensitivity to pick up on these things. So you can sense when the breath energy is flowing well, when it's not flowing well, and if it's not flowing well, what the problem is. Sometimes a blockage seems to be in one place, but the real cause of it is in another place. Sometimes the cause is mental, sometimes it's physical, sometimes it's a combination of the two. There are things you can sort out here. And it's taking an interest in this that's going to keep you here alert and awake. Otherwise you kind of drift in, drift out. Get into what a John leaves to call delusion concentration. Where everything is sort of shapeless and formless and you're not really sure where you are. It feels nice, but it's not a basis for any kind of real mindfulness or alertness. So when things are comfortable, give yourself work to do here in the body. In addition to working with the breath energy in the different parts, you can visualize, the, say, the bones. Where are your finger bones right now? Where are your, the bones in the palm of your hand? Where are the bones in your forearm, your upper arm, the shoulder? Start down with the toes and work up the legs. Kind of visualize the different bones and then ask yourself, where are they right now? In other words, whatever keeps you here in the body, in the present moment, 
with a sense of interest. That's going to help establish your foundation. Once you've worked through all the energy knots in the body and worked through the, say, the bones or whatever other organs you want to look at, it's time to settle down. Find a spot that feels at ease and is one of the, what you call, major intersections in the body where different breath channels seem to come together. The, the breastbone is a convenient one, base of the throat, down at the abdomen, or anywhere you sense that you have a tendency to be very sensitive and to tighten up when something happens that surprises you or shocks you or disturbs you. And if you can maintain a sense of openness right there at that spot, that sense of openness will spread. And you stay there and think of your awareness spreading as well. And see how long you can maintain that sense of being centered, but with a broad awareness. And not really have anything else that you have to do. How long can the mind stay unoccupied like this? It's a skill. And part of the skill is overcoming that voice that says, well, what's next? What's next? Nothing next is going to happen until you've got this down. If it does happen, it's not going to be very solid. So if you want solid results in the meditation, you've got to create a solid state of mind. You have to have a solid determination. You're going to stick with this, regardless of what other voices in the mind say. This is dumb. You're not thinking about anything, so you don't have to think about it right now. So it says you're irresponsible. No, I'm being very responsible. Because the source of all action comes from right here. And if we don't keep a good eye on the source, who knows what's going to come out. Sometimes it'll slip right past you and you won't know what happened. To so try to get settled right here, because all the important work is going to happen right here, and you need to be settled in order to do it. 